It has been a busy day on Capitol Hill. Lawmakers have been holding hearings on everything from bank failures to Starbucks unionization. And after two days of reaction to school shooting in Nashville, Washington mostly turned its attention in other directions. Fiery House and Senate hearings continued. A question about the fate of the social media app TikTok, as I mentioned. Not to mention, yes indeed, that debt ceiling deadline. For more on this, Caitlin Huey Burns and Scott McFarland join us now. Caitlin is CBS News political correspondent. Scott, CBS News congressional correspondent. Scott, talk to us about TikTok and where it stands this week. The chair of the House Energy and Commerce Committee is taking the lead on drafting some type of legislation, what she calls a targeted ban of TikTok. They're going to take a few weeks at least to get the legislation through or at least to a drafted form, going to work with some other committees along the way. And she is optimistic something will come out of the U.S. House within weeks, which is a major issue for the 150 million people who use TikTok and for all the parents and teachers trying to command their teenagers' attention away from TikTok. Take a listen to part of our interview with Kathy McMorris-Rogers, Republican from Washington, who chairs the House Energy Committee. Uh, we believe, I believe it is important, it is critical to, uh, in order to address the immediate threat for us to ban TikTok. And, and that is a, a shared concern by my colleagues. Uh, and, and there are Republicans and Democrats that are concerned about the, the immediate threat that TikTok poses. At this moment in time, you propose a ban on TikTok. Is there a realistic pathway to actually that becoming law? Well, as I, yes, yes. Uh, there, we, there's a national security threat. There's a privacy threat. TikTok has repeatedly been caught in the lie that they're not, they're not, you know, that the Chinese Communist Party does not have access to this data. But, Major, there are Democrats, including Mark Pocan of Wisconsin, who say this is way too narrow, that this is, to a degree, picking on TikTok when there are concerns with many social media platforms and their access to our data. There was a Republican effort for a unanimous consent vote to ban TikTok. It's going to fall short as well. This may be aspirational. More than realistic, we'll find out within a few weeks. And, Caitlin, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the debt ceiling situation. I talked to Dusty Johnson, Republican from South Dakota today, for the takeout that will be airing later. He said, look, Congress is about to go on a two-week recess. When it comes back, there's essentially going to be six weeks to deal with this issue. And he talked to me about where things stand. I want to run that sound bite for everyone, talk about the question of where leverage is. Let's take a quick listen. Unfortunately, everybody in this town loves power negotiation, right? So you never want to be the first guy or gal to act like you want to cut a deal because that gives way leverage. People care about leverage way too much in this town. So we've kind of squandered two months while he continues with this uh, pretense that he's not going to negotiate. His point to me was, and these are the words he used, we're approaching crisis stage, that there will not be time and the White House better, from his perspective, at least begin negotiations because he sees no pathway for House Republicans to pass a clean debt ceiling. Well, that seems like an uphill battle at this point, because right now you're in a situation where the White House and Kevin McCarthy, the House Speaker, are just trading letters back and forth. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any sort of ground made up in terms of those conversations from the last time you and I talked about this. And what's interesting, you mentioned that they have essentially six weeks. I mean, that's an eternity for this Congress, especially this Congress, which we know, you know, has to kind of operate on a deadline here. And there has been really no movement in terms of agreeing to a discussion about the debt ceiling at all. Mm -hmm. um, Biden remains firm that he is not discussing or negotiating the debt ceiling. Republicans want to have certain budget cuts. They have to still release a budget. They have to still get on the same page about what that budget looks like. And we haven't really seen much movement on that either. Scott, does six weeks feel like an eternity to you? Or what are you hearing on the Hill about this topic? This feels like a stalemate that hasn't budged in weeks or months. We're right where we were when this new Republican majority took over the U.S. House. So there's been time squandered already, and no indications time won't be squandered in the future. Um, they're also not here for a couple of weeks. The House right. is going on its recess, and the president will be here in Washington without House members to talk to in person. I'm not sure if them being here is helping matters, but Congress isn't in effect, isn't in session for those six weeks. So there might be less time to play with than even that. Scott, catch us up on the Starbucks hearing. What's it about? 
there was a marathon hearing. The, the, the then CEO, the three time CEO of Starbucks, being accused of being a union buster by Senate Democrats for disincentivizing unions at Starbucks nationwide. He's accused of being somebody who has unlawfully prevented unions from forming. He denied that and said those are just allegations and that he's not broken the law. But there were in this huge cavernous Senate hearing room today a whole series of Starbucks workers, including those who tried to lead union efforts from Pittsburgh to New York and elsewhere. And they said when they tried to form a union, they were pushed back against by this company. There were Republicans who were a sanctuary for Howard Schultz during this hearing major. This was so different than the TikTok hearing last mm -hmm. week. This CEO, or this former CEO, found supporters from the Republicans who said that this is a job-creating company. This is a company that has done a remarkable thing, convinced Americans to pay $6 a cup for coffee and produced a lot of jobs because of it. So this was a party-divided hearing. Democrats accused him of not doing right by workers, Republicans saying he's doing very right by creating jobs and serving workers. Uh, just uh, to note this for the audience, there are some Americans who just get black coffee and it's still under three bucks. <laughs> Caitlin, TikTok, very quickly, there is a sense that there is a political dynamic to this under the surface, or maybe it's very close to the surface. Lots of young people use and love TikTok. They have in the last two elections for sure voted mm -hmm. primarily for Democrats. Mm -hmm. Democrats may be feeling a little hesitant for that reason. Yeah, it, Biden's kind of stuck in this position where he needs to be tough on China to talk to Republicans, talk to independents, talk to some Democrats as well. But at the same time, the base of the Democratic Party really uh, consists of, in large part, these young people. You had uh, Gina Raimondo, the Commerce mm -hmm. Secretary, making the argument that, you know, they risk turning away these voters. I'm not convinced of that just yet because, um, you know, voters, obviously all voters vote on a lot of different things. Young voters are not a monolithic group at all. No. Yes, they care about this issue. Yes, they're very um, involved in this issue, but they also very much care about things like gun reforms and other measures. And I also think, to Scott's earlier point, there are so many questions about what a ban would look like. Will it even be a ban? Will it be, a spe you know, forcing a spinoff of this company? Um, and the other thing, you know, challenge for Biden is that he has appeared in TikTok videos. I mean, Democrats, all lawmakers, really, but uh, Democrats especially have used the platform to their advantage. We have seen AOC, for example, talking about how she doesn't want to ban TikTok while on TikTok. Uh, so this is, this is, and we've seen this before with other candidates where they use the medium they are deriding, right? Mm -hmm. We see this with Amazon, for example. So it creates this kind of conundrum of sorts. Um, but I think there is a long road to go about whether this does in fact turn away young voters who just care about a lot of things. And Scott, real quickly, before I let you go, just for the audience's benefit, we saw, said six weeks once Congress gets back. If there are no negotiations and it's a six-week clock, you've got to first break that fever. Someone's got to say we're going to negotiate. Then you've got to name your negotiators. Then you've got to set the parameters. Then you've got to negotiate a deal. Then you've got to write the legislation. Then you've got to pass it. Six weeks feels like a very short period of time. We're all going to need those $3 cups of coffee you enjoy so much, Major, because this is going to be a late night and a long weekend type of endeavor. This is going to be an 11th hour move. I think everybody's getting that realization right now. And the question is, how much of a ding or cut does the economy take because they wait so long for an answer? If you want to make your barista happy, just say black coffee, please. Caitlin Huey-Burns and Scott McFarland, thanks so very much.